we can see that in the area of the mind. We can see evidence for remobilization and recrystallization and sulfidation of, of copper sulfides. But I think that even the ones, even the, now looking back on it, I think that a lot of the copper sulfides that we maybe thought were original, the boronite magnetite, even those are probably had been remobilized a time or two. The calcopyrite there, uh, we could see that it was clearly remobilized. And the, originally you had a boronite magnetite assemblage, and then that had been overprinted by later alteration of the altered magnetite boronite to calcopyrite. But looking back on that, I think even the boronite that we were looking at thinking was pristine and probably wasn't. I'm sure that I, whenever I saw Born, I thought it was going to be a pristine rock. So did I. But at the same time, puzzled by the fact that it, in many cases I would also be seeing a little bit of chloride. Yeah. A few other yeah. minerals that didn't quite fit. That's right. Something that was, you know, maybe deposited around 500 or even higher degrees yeah. centigrade. So there was something strange going on. Yeah. And I, the, the, the overall link between these, these, the, Bornite copper pyrite assemblages was set um, with quartz veins. Was a link that we saw in deposit after deposit after deposit. It was like some of the recent uh, cathode luminescence work that uh, has been used to suggest that uh, a lot of the copper iron sulfides, like bornite copper, are actually deposited at far lower temperatures than the mass of the quartz. Deposit or redeposit. And, but in the I'm talking, referring to publications, one of which has my name in it, which suggests that the bulk of the copper was deposited at lower temperatures. Yeah. I'm talking about the papers. I'm not talking about where the truth might be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but we've always been worried about it. I've certainly always been worried about it, and I know that you've been critical of some of uh, some of these, uh, and for good reasons, uh, because you can argue, well, why is it that all of these lower temperature fluids that you say are, that I say, are depositing born at part of 350, why is it that all those fluids, and the majority of them, are, fine, are depositing that only in the earlier so called A or AB quartz yeah. veins that formed at 600 to 500 degrees C? Exactly. It, it, so there's something yeah. about an initial depositional event that we can't see because it's been totally uh, overprinted by. Readjustments within this mass of early A, A, B quartz veins. Yeah. Oh. Fracture, dissolution, redeposition, and so on. There's the sulfides around. They all end up in that last, what if Bingham looks like a, a non, non, uh, the black quartz, the black cath and catholuminescence, non-luminescent quartz. Yeah. All of it, they all are in there, and in little bugs and little overgrowths. Yeah. But they could, all could have moved. Yeah, and, they, and but they didn't apparently move very far. Maybe they did a little bit more in Bingham, but yeah. in, in many deposits, uh, what you see is the same thing we see it, we saw there at Arrington, and you have most of the coppers and zones with lots of A veins. And when you look in detail, the the bornite, when you still have bornite left and magnetite, is disseminated in the A veins. Maybe ninety percent of it will be disseminated in the A veins, and and. And that's usually when there's still fresh biotite, or at least some fresh biotite, so the overprinting hasn't been very strong. But when you look in detail in those A veins, it looks like that boronite or calcopyrite is in little tiny fractures that cut the A veins and cut through A vein quartz. And that's where the sulfides actually are. But they're not very far out of the A veins. Usually they're not at all out of the A veins. And usually when it's calcopyrite, maybe they're a little more out of the A veins. When it's still boronite and magnetite, most of the copper sulfides are still in the A veins, and even though they're in late fractures of the A veins, yeah. and there's usually yeah. chloride around yeah. them, like you said. And, and to me, if I was a copper sulfide, the last place I'd want to deposit myself was would be in a quartz, yeah, a quartz vein. vein. Why, why yeah, deposit non yourself? Non-reactive. No it's non-reactive. Why would you? I mean, the whole rock is fractured, so it's not just because the quartz fractures easily. The, the A veins fracture, sure, but so is the rest of the rock. So why don't we get deposited out of the rock? And, uh, and the answer is you do if, if it's, there's enough remobilization to make everything into calcopyrite and pyrite. But when it's still bornite, 
and even sometimes chalcopyrite is still in the A veins. And there's more or less degrees of mobilization like that. So what, what it looks like to me is that the initial deposition had to be probably bornite or digenite calcite or something like that in A veins. And, uh, and even bornite assemblages are probably a little bit recrystallized, remobilized, maybe a little bit sulfurized. So.